In this video, we'll take a closer look at perfect square trinomials. To factor this trinomial that has a leading term x squared, we can assume that our factored form will look like two sets of parentheses. Each set of parentheses begins with x. We're looking for a pair of numbers that multiplied together would equal this last constant, the 25, added together would equal the middle coefficient 10, positive 5, and another positive 5. And we can sometimes choose to write it factored this way. Now this is why x squared plus 10x plus 25 is called a perfect square trinomial, because it is basically one factor multiplied by itself. And this is similar to numbers that we would call perfect squares. Those numbers would be 1, 4, 9, 16, and so on. These are perfect squares because these can all be written as some number times itself. And so on. In general, when we have a perfect square trinomial, which we get from multiplying some factor by itself, when I do FOIL method here, and then combine like terms, we see that the three terms in our trinomial, the first term will always be our first term in parentheses squared. And our last term is always the last term in parentheses squared. And our middle term is two times a and b, so the two terms in parentheses multiply together, and then times 2. And we see that is because when we do FOIL, m doing the outer step and the inner step, both of those are multiplying a times b, and this is 1ab with 1ab to give us 2ab. The way we can put this pattern to use to our advantage would be to, let's pull down the x squared plus 10x plus 25. And the clues to help me see that this is a perfect square trinomial would be to first see that our leading term can be written as something squared. And our last term can be written as something squared. Let's take a second just to determine what those two quantities are. The first one is kind of it is what it is, x squared. But for the 25, what number to the second power should equal 25? We'll go with 5. Now, in the middle, what do we need to see? We need to see 2 times a times b. Well, basically, what we have in our first box here is a, and what we have in our box back here is b. So is our middle 2 times x times 5? Instead of calling it 2 times a times b, it's 2 times x times 5, and that is 10x. So since the first term is a square, and the last term is a square, and our middle term meets this 2ab pattern, that tells us that x squared plus 10x plus 25 is a perfect square trinomial, and what we see in the boxes here would go in parentheses in our factored answer. Let's look at another example to illustrate this point. Here's another trinomial. I'd like to determine if it is a perfect square trinomial, and if so, what will it look like when it's in factored form? Using my shortcuts about perfect square trinomials would have me think, what belongs in this first box that would equal x squared? x. What belongs in this last box that would equal 16? Has to be to the second power, 4 squared. Now in the middle, do I have 2 times the first box times the second box? 2 times x times 4, 2 times 4 is 8 with the x, 8x. Our middle term is a negative 8x, but we still do have a perfect square trinomial. What we'll do when we see that it's a negative is that we will make this number back here negative. And now we can finish writing this in factored form, and we would have x minus 4. Now this third term, it will always have to be positive if it is a perfect square trinomial. And remember, negative 4 squared does equal positive 16. Using the pattern for a perfect square trinomial should not replace 
the factoring that we've learned so far. So if your preference when we see x squared minus 8x plus 16 is to think, well, what is this pair of numbers that multiplied together would equal positive 16 and added together would equal negative 8, and we would find the pair of numbers to be negative 4 and negative 4. There's our x minus 4 squared. We'll get the same answer, so we don't want to think that using this pattern for perfect squares should replace what we have so far. Here's another trinomial. Do we have a perfect square? Well, can we write these boxes with exponent 2 on the outside and come up with what quantity in the first box to the second power would equal 4x squared? We know we need 1x inside to equal x squared. For the coefficient, we would need 2. 2 to the second power equals 4. So 2x squared equals 4x squared. Back here, to come up with a 25, we need 5. Now we'll check on the middle term. In the middle, do we have 2 times the first box, 2x, times the last box, 5? 2 times 2, 4. 4 times 5, 20x. So a confirmation, they're both positive. That means we can go right to our answer, 2x plus 5 squared. Again, with this example, our other factoring methods would still work. My other approach for this type of trinomial would be when our leading term has a coefficient that's not 1, in this case that 4, I multiply first and third, and now I'm looking for what is another pair of numbers that multiplied together would equal 100, added together would equal 20. 10 and 10 is that pair of numbers, so the middle term was split up into two new terms using positive 10 for the coefficient, and then finish with factor by grouping. And we can see that we would come up with the same factored answer using our other factoring techniques. Here's one last example. Let's take this trinomial, decide if we have a perfect square trinomial, and then write it in factored form. You can even pause the video right now and try this one, then restart the video. We'll look at the answer together. My first approach is the first term. Can I come up with some quantity to the second power that would equal this term 9x squared. So we need 3 to give us our coefficient, and we need 1x. This last term, can I do the same, come up with some quantity to the second power that would equal 49y squared? 7y. Next, we need to confirm our middle term. Is our middle term 2 times the first box, 3x, times the second box, or the last box, 7y. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 7 42. And we have 1x and 1y. Let's check our sign. We had a negative. means that this is a negative 7y. And in factored form, 3x minus 7y squared. Now let's talk about what it means to complete the square. I've rewritten the two perfect square trinomials from the examples that we just looked at, but I only used the two that start with x squared. Because when we are talking about completing the square, we are talking about trinomials that start with x squared. We do not complete the square when we have a 2x squared or 3x squared or anything else, only when our first term is x squared. In addition to the patterns that we were just looking at, like the middle term has to be 2 times the first box times the last box, when we start with x squared, we can see a little bit of a more straightforward pattern. And that would be, if we look at our middle coefficient, in this case it's positive 10, if we cut it in half, that would give us 5. And now if I square that number, we get 25, and that is our third number. This 5 that we got just from cutting it in half, where did that show up? In our factored form, x plus 5 squared. 
Okay, let's look at this trinomial the same way. What we're looking for is middle coefficient that we can cut it in half. In this case, negative 8 cut in half would be negative 4. And now when I square this negative 4, I do that times itself equals positive 16. What we get after we do the square is our third term. The number that we used from cutting it in half shows up in our factored form. In this case, x minus 4 squared. Here's an example of the most common type of problem we would face when we're studying completing the square. Given these first two terms of the trinomial, what third number belongs here to make a perfect square trinomial? We'll use these ideas of find that middle number, cut it in half, and then square it. The number that we get after squaring is our third term, the constant. The number that we got after cutting it in half is what is used in factored form. Here's another example. Let's figure out what is the third term to give us a perfect square trinomial and what would it look like in factored form. We're looking for this middle coefficient negative 12. If we cut it in half, it would give us negative 6. Squaring that, negative 6 times negative 6, positive 36. We can say that this third term, if we're talking about perfect square trinomials, it will always be positive. And where we would use the negative would be in factored form. We cut it in half to get negative 6, in parentheses, x minus 6. This is as far as we're taking the problems for completing the square for now. When we get to solving quadratic equations, then we'll see again how we can use completing the square. And you also see it in some other places in algebra. But for now, all we would like to do is answer this type of a question. What is the missing third term, and what would it look like when it's written in factored form? But let's do a few more examples to illustrate some trickier points. Here are two more examples, but our steps are going to be the same for answering this question. What should we see now with this coefficient positive 3? Well, to say cut it in half, it doesn't divide evenly. What I like to do when we get to odd numbers, and I'll do the same for fractions, multiply by 1 half. 1 half times 3, 3 over 2. And keep it as an improper fraction. Just make sure it's simplified. 3 over 2, we're OK there. After we cut it in half, we square it. Well, with fractions, I really like to write it out twice, but you'll decide if it's helpful for you to do that, or if you can just see 3 over 2 squared would give us 9 over 4. Remember where these numbers go. After we square it is the third term in the trinomial. The number that we found after cutting it in half is what goes in parentheses in the factored form. This example will be worked out in a similar way. Half of our middle term negative 4 fifths. So I'm cutting it in half, doing times 1 half. This would equal a negative 4 tenths, or I can maybe see a little simplifying. Negative 2 fifths. Then we would square it. I know the square is always positive, or I could think, well, this is a negative times negative, which is positive. And I could just worry about doing the 2 fifths times 2 fifths. 4 25ths. After we square, that number becomes our third term. What we got from cutting it in half is what's used in parentheses in the factored form. Let's look at two more examples. This time, it's our middle term that's missing. This type of a problem is a lot more rare. We don't encounter it nearly as often as the kind where we're trying to come up with the number part where we know x squared and we know the middle term. This is just to see how well do we really know this pattern about perfect square trinomials. We want to remember that the middle number, what did we do? We would cut it in half and then square it. Okay, We would cut it in half and then we would square it. 
if we start with this last number, we want to do the opposite of these moves. So instead of squaring it, we will do square root. And then after we do square root, instead of cutting it in half, we're going to double it. Okay? We just looked at several examples where we had a middle term, we would cut it in half and square it. That gave us our third number. Now we're going from our third number, we have to backtrack to our second number. So these steps that we did to go from middle term to third term, we have to do the opposite. Instead of cut in half and then square, we will go in, in reverse, back those steps up. Instead of square, do square root. Instead of cut in half, times 2. How will that work out with this problem? 49, the square root, so we're saying what number times itself would equal 49 square roots of 49 would equal 7. And then when we do the 7 times 2, 14. 14 is our number in that middle term. Remember, that middle term is the term that has x, so let's not forget put in 14x. Let's see how the same steps would work with this example, 1 16th. First we have to do the square root. Well, square root of 1 16th, starting to get a little bit tricky here, but I can tell you pretty quickly that you could just think about square root of the top number, or the numerator, and then square root of the denominator. Square root of 1 is 1, because 1 times 1 is 1. Square root of 16 is 4. So this square root of 1 16th is 1 fourth. That's our square root. Now we still need to do times 2. 1 fourth times 2. Hopefully we can do that one in our head, but 1 fourth times 2. 2 fourths, we can simplify 1 half. So that number 1 half is our middle coefficient, and don't forget the x. But with almost all of these completing the square problems, we do like to take it that one final step and write it in factored form. Just as before, what we got from doing our first step, the cut in half, is what we used in parentheses here. And same thing, what we get after doing our first step, this time the square root, that is the number that we see in parentheses. This example, writing it in factored form, x plus 1 fourth squared. And remember that our signs will match up. These were both with positive, so in parentheses, positive. If we had a negative 1 half, this would become a negative 1 fourth. Here are three final examples for you to try. In each one, we need to figure out what is the missing term, and then what would it look like written in factored form. So pause the video, try these three, then restart the video. We'll look at the answers together. I need to remember when completing the square, if I have the first two terms, then I begin with this second coefficient. I need to do two steps. First, let's cut it in half. It is an odd number, so I'll just write it as 11 over 2. Then we will square it. 11 over 2 times 11 over 2. This is 121 over 4. And that number that we get after squaring is our third term, the constant. The number that we got after cutting it in half is what shows up in the parentheses. Next example. Again, we have the first two terms. I'll go to this coefficient negative 20. When we cut it in half, we get to negative 10. And then when we square negative 10 times negative 10, positive 100. 100 for the constant. In factored form, x minus 10 squared. Careful there that we use a minus because this middle term was negative. Last example, our missing term is the middle term. So when we begin with this last term, the constant, I need to do the opposite moves. I need to first do what's the square root of 144, what number times itself equals 144, that's 12. And then instead of cut in half, we need to do this times 2, 12 times 2, 24. This middle term was 24x in factored form x plus 12 squared.